हेलो एवरी वन टूडे विल स्टार्ट विद यूनिट फोर ऑफ कंपाइलर डिज़ाइन दैट इज सिंपल टेबल एंड रन टाइम एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन वी नो वेरी वेल एंड वी हैव स्टार्टेड दिस इन यूनिट वन दैट सिंपल टेबल दिस इज अ टेबल दैट इज बिल्ड बाय द फेजेज ऑफ द कंपाइलर एंड इट इज यूज बाय द फेजेज ऑफ द कंपाइलर सम फेजेज बिल्ड इट एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ द फेजेज यूज इज इट now we'll study what is symbol table how the data is stored in symbol table what data is stored in the table in the symbol table okay first of all symbol table what is symbol table it is actually a data structure a data structure that is used to keep the track of the semantics of a variable that means it records information about the variables information like their scope their bindings binding means association association means a is equals to 1 this is a binding here a is a data object that is associated with a value 1 this is binding so symbol table stores the scope of the data objects their bindings their names etc so in short it is a data structure that holds the information about the variables or about the data objects now this symbol table this is built by lexical and syntax analysis phase syntax analysis phase this is built by these two and rest of the phases uses the symbol table the semantic analysis phase if we talk about this phase this is the third phase of compiler the semantic analysis phase uses the symbol table for type conflict issue type conflict issue means when there is a mis mismatch between the types of the data objects types means data types so semantic analysis phase uses this to resolve the type conflict issues the code generation phase that means the last phase uses it to to find how much run time space is allocated and what type of run time space is allocated so type of run time space and the amount of run time space apart from this symbol table is also used to find l values and r values now what is l value and r value suppose we have a expression like this a is equals to i plus 1 then whatever is there in the left hand side of the assignment operator that is l value and whatever is there an expression that is in the right hand side of the assignment operator is known as r value so symbol table this is also used for finding the l values and r values now let's talk about symbol table entries symbol table entries means what kind of data is there in the symbol table symbol table stores the names of the variable in the beginning i said that symbol table is a data structure that is used to store the semantics of data objects semantics of data objects means information about the data objects data objects means variables so name of the variables or you can say constants name of the constants values of constants offsets offset means if we talk about offset of any element in an array then offset of any element of any nth element of an array is the relative distance between that element to the beginning element of the array so offset pointers 
arguments uh, base address these are some of the elements that are stored in the symbol table now the question is from these information from these entries what compiler uses from symbol table or what compiler gets from a symbol table the compiler extracts the type of the data their names pointers arguments okay symbol table also stores the names of the procedures all the names whether it is a procedure it is a constant it is a data object all the names are stored here and compiler extracts data types the names pointers arguments from this symbol table now our next topic is how the names are stored in symbol table again and again i'm saying this thing that symbol table stores names then how these names are stored how symbol table stores names see there are two methods in which a symbol table stores the names of the element first is fixed length name fixed length name in fixed length name a fixed amount of space is allocated to store the names of the variable suppose this is the storage area suppose this is a storage area then how many words are there nine so if we have another name like this sum then calculate has occupied the entire space but if we talk about this sum there is a wastage of space a fixed amount of space is available to store all the names if i'm storing only a single variable i then so much of space is wasted so this is the drawback that in fixed length name there is a wastage of memory space why there is a uh, wastage of memory space because there is a fixed amount of space to store the names of the data objects okay calculate sum i these are suppose these are the three names calculate has occupied the fixed amount space but if we talk about the next name that is sum sum although it has occupied three cells but rest of the cells are wasted and if we talk about this then there is a huge amount of wastage of memory so wastage is there next is variable length name variable length name what is this using this method any name that is stored in the memory sorry in the symbol table is stored with the help of a starting index and a length starting index and length suppose we want to store these calculate sum and i these three names in the symbol table then the starting index is always zero for the first element okay then length there are what is the length of calculate 9 but will store 10 here why 10 i'll tell you next is sum if this occupies a length of 10 that means it is starting from 
zero to ten, length is ten, so zero to nine. So next position would be ten. Okay. Then sum, length of sum is three plus one, that is four. Then ten plus four, the next index would be fourteen. Now, what is the length of i? One. One plus one, two. Why I am adding one? See. First index is zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Length is ten. Ten zero to nine is ten. Then ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and last sixteen. Now the first name is calculate. Calculate. Now after this. There will be a end marker, end marker to distinguish between two successive names. Now, after this end marker, from the tenth index, starting index of second name is ten. So, from tenth, the second name will be stored. Second is sum. Then again a end marker. Then starting index fourteen. So, I'll store i here and then a end marker. end marker is basically used to distinguish between two successive names okay so there are two methods to store the names in the symbol table first is fixed length name then variable length name in fixed length name we saw that we observed that there is a fixed amount of space that is available to allocate to the names of the variable and in case if the name of those variables is lesser than the amount of space allocated then there will be a wastage of memory in variable length name there is a concept of starting index and length and between two successive names we put a end marker in the symbol table okay now let's move to data structures for symbol table data structures for symbol table the first data structure that is used to build a symbol table is lists lists what is a list a list uses arrays to store the names of the variable and their associated information for example name 1 info 1 name 2 info 2 name 3 info 3 and so on name n info n see list list uses arrays to store the names of the variable and their associated information in list we have a pointer called available this available pointer always points to the first empty slot in the list that means हमने क्या किया यहाँ पर हमने यहाँ पे n रिकॉर्ड्स हमने यहाँ पे n एंट्रीज हमने इस लिस्ट में स्टोर किए हैं आफ्टर दिस एन एथ एंट्री देर इज अ एम टी स्लॉट सो जो भी फर्स्ट एम टी स्लॉट होगा दैट इज पॉइंटेड बाई दिस अवेलेबल पॉइंटर ओके अवेलेबल पॉइंटर इज अ पॉइंटर दैट पॉइंट्स टू द फर्स्ट एम टी स्लॉट इन द लिस्ट नाउ there are two types of errors that we find in list one is use of undeclared use of undeclared name 
and another one is multiple defined names these are the two errors two error messages now what is this if we want to search for any name or for any information in the list then the searching starts from beginning and suppose after searching we have reached to available point without finding the name of that element then the error that is produced is use of undeclared name what i am trying to say that hum koi element hum koi name apne symbol table mein search kar rahe hain and searching always starts from the beginning ab jab humne searching yahan se start ki aur hum search karte karte available tak pahunch gaye available tak pahunchne tak hame wo element is list mein nahi mila aur bina mile hi hum available par pahunch gaye and we know that available is a pointer that stores the first empty slot in the list so that means wo element jo hum search kar rahe the that is not present in the list so hame kya message display hoga use of undeclared name okay now second error message second is multiple defined names what happens while we are inserting any information or any name in the list we should first check for the redundancy redundancy means first we should check that whether that name is already available in the list or not if it is available and again we are trying to store that name in the list then we'll get an error message multiple defined names theek hai jo name already hamara present hai list mein hum usi ko dobara se store kar rahe hain to is case mein kya hoga data redundancy hogi and then this kind of message will be flashed on the screen multiple defined names clear now the second data structure that is used for making the symbol table is self organizing lists self organizing lists now what are self organizing lists these are actually your link lists link list name one info one name two info two name three info three and there is a link part suppose this is the first element of the list then there is a pointer that will point to the next element suppose this is the next element and this is holding the address of this element so this is what this is a link list okay self organizing means self organizing list means linked list where each element has two parts one is data part another one is link part the link part always stores the address of the next element of the list clear now the third and the last data structure that is available for creating the data structure sorry that is available for creating the symbol table is hash table now what is hash table this is a table that is maintained by two tables one is hash table another one is symbol table what i'm trying to say that in this method we have two tables <coughs> sorry one is hash table hash table is actually a pointer pointer to the entries of the symbol table another one is symbol table for example we have an expression like sum i j average suppose this is a these are the contents of hash table hash table name info and hash link okay see what i am trying to say that 
sum i and j and suppose this is average so what is hash table hash table is actually a table that stores the pointer to the entries that are there in the symbol table although i have written sum but this will not store sum this will not store the name of this uh, name of this uh, symbol table entry this will store the pointer to the sum okay pointer to the sum means this will store the location of this sum that where it is stored in the memory where it is stored in the symbol table okay and if these are interlinked it also contains self organizing list if these are linked with each other then this the entries of symbol table may also contain a link to the another element link to the another element means this element and the element that is just after this element is j i always hold the link part of i is storing the pointer to the next element that is j clear in this we use hash function hash function what is that if we want to find the position of any element in the symbol table then what we can do we can do we can use this hash function position of any element is equals to h hash function and name of that entry okay so this hash function this is used to determine whether any name is there in the symbol table or not if we talk about the advantages of uh, hash table then quick searching is possible using hash table but the major drawback of hash table is that it is very complicated to implement plus it requires extra space space requirements memory requirement is very high in case of hash tables list this is the most simplest and efficient is self organizing list now let's move to the next topic that is run time storage organization run time storage organization what is run time storage organization run time storage organization means any storage that is demanded at the time of run time what happens the compiler demands for a block of memory to the operating system and it utilizes it for running the compiled program if we talk about this uh, storage uh, structure then the storage structure is something like this code area static data area then we have stack and then heap see code area means the target code that is produced by the compiler this target code this is always stored in the bottom of the storage okay why this is stored in the bottom because the size of the target code the size of the generated code is fixed so it is always placed at the bottom of the storage organization next is a static data area static data area always stores the static elements static data data elements static data elements means the memory required by the data objects the name of the data objects that means those information that are available at the compile time at the time of the compilation and those are static in nature static in nature means that will not change they are not dynamic they are fixed so fixed information are stored in static data area then we have a place for stack in the storage organization what is a stack stack always holds your active procedures the active procedures uses stacks active procedure you can say active sub programs 
the active sub program are stored in stack all the activation records activation record means you can say this is sub program and activation record means the contents of or the statements of sub program activation records are stored in stack and once this activation record this is executed the execution of activation record or the execution of this procedure is done it is complete then this active procedure can be popped from the stack so this is dynamic in nature so dynamic elements dynamic storage is always placed at the top of the organization now at the top of the storage organization we have a place for heap now what is heap heap points to your run time storage run time storage means the storage or the block of memory that is used, utilized by the compiler for running the compiled program jo program compile ho chuka hai ab usko store karne ke liye jo space required hota hai that is heap and heap is always at the top most is is the top most element of the storage organization so this is the structure of storage organization where runtime storage is at the top of the this organization and all the static elements are stored at the bottom of this storage organization okay next is storage allocation strategies storage allocation strategies see we have three types of storage allocation strategies one is static allocation second is stack allocation and third is heap allocation these are the three strategies or you can say three waves three ways of allocating a storage first is static static allocation means those data elements whose names are known at the time of compilation whose values are known known at the time of compilation their bindings that is known as static elements and these are always allocated static memory what i'm trying to say that all those data objects whose size names and bindings are known at the time of the compilation they are said to exhibit static allocation okay that means in static allocation compiler knows the entire information about the data objects before running them next comes stack allocation static allocation do not supports recursive procedures it do not support recursive procedures okay second is stack allocation the storage in stack allocation is organized as a stack data as a stack stack means last in first out we have two operations in stack push and pop push means to insert and pop means to delete so this stack allocation this is dynamic in nature okay dynamic means the information about the data objects is not known at the time of compilation as the activation begins hence activation records are stored in the stack and once done they are popped from the stack okay this is slower as compared to static allocation because it uses pointers and index registers third is heap allocation what is heap allocation heap allocation allocates a continuous block of memory continuous block of memory when required for storage 
and this is used to store the activation records and their other data objects and in heap allocation the amount of memory or this can continuous block of memory that has been allocated it can be deallocated also and since it can be deallocated so the storage can be reused in case of heap allocation okay what i am trying to say that in static allocation all the static information that is known at the time of compilation is said to exhibit a static allocation and static allocation do not supports recursive procedures next is a stack allocation stack allocation in this the active procedures are stored active procedures and their activation records and once the procedure is executed these are popped from the stack so this is dynamic in nature because the size grows grows and shrinks and last is heap allocation in heap allocation a continuous block of memory is allocated to the active procedures and on successful execution of active procedure or once the execution is completed then this continuous block of memory this can be deallocated and it can be allocated to some other active procedure that means reusing of memory spaces there okay and for examination point of view this is a very important topic